Um, we'll give it like just maybe a couple more minutes before I get started and introduce everyone. Oh, we'll get started. We'll get started. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, my name is Diane. Uh, I am a C6 quad. Um, I was injured in July of 2020. I'm part of the Kelly Brush family and just really excited to be facilitating this conversation. A uh, little intro. Um, in April of this year, the Kelly Brush Foundation, in collaboration with the United Spinal Association, started this virtual group focused on adaptive sports and recreation. Um, we meet bi-weekly every other Tuesday at 5.30. And the hope really is that this provides a platform for adaptive sports enthusiasts to just engage in lively discussion about various recreational activities. Um, so to enrich these conversations, we ask experts to offer their insight in the form of either question and answers or presentations, storytellers, panelists, um, all the above. So from veterans to novices to patients to clinicians, um, we just invite everyone and anyone to come with questions, ready to engage, share their experience and discover new possibilities in adaptive sports and recreation. Um, this week, we are focusing our discussion on wheelchair rugby or quad rugby, um, which is a full contact sport. Um, physical contact between wheelchairs is a very important part of the game. Um, the game is played on an indoor basketball court with volleyball. Um, the object of the game is to score a goal by crossing the goal line with possession of the ball. Um, complex strategy for both offense and defense are imperative to win the game. All players have a disability that affects both their upper and lower limbs, which maybe I'll let the coaches kind of talk more about that. Um, and women compete on the same team as men. Um, players are classified based on function and rugby chairs are customized for each individual based on their rating and position on their team, either offense or defense. And I just kind of wanted to pause here for a hot second and share my screen with you guys. Um, so I can show you a little bit about, um, just those two different chair options. Um, let's see, can everyone see my screen now? So this is the active project. When you go to the active project, um, this will be the kind of the home page. You can click on sports. Um, we got a bunch of sports already listed and are continuously adding more. You can scroll down to rugby. Still adding more on this particular page, but a little bit about um, wheelchair rugby, quad rugby, go to the equipment options. These are just the what each chair looks like. So this is the offensive rugby chair, a little description. You, you click more. Uh, those are the two different uh, or big brands of two different wheelchair chair, wheelchair rugby chairs, and then the defensive chair. Um, we also have... Um, we don't have too many um, videos up right now, but if for specifically wheelchair rugby, but if you go to general sport um, and go to instructional videos, here are transfers into a chair that is similar to a rugby chair. Um, so I'll just quickly show you guys uh, this. Okay, so we're gonna transfer into a uh, sports chair. And uh, I like to put it up against the wall because sports chairs can't have brakes. So I put it up against the wall so it can't roll anywhere. And I set the brakes with my daily chair. Wraps, you wanna do wraps. Three and she a sport chair. So I kick my legs off, I grab the frame of the sport chair, the frame of my daily chair, and I'll lift and sit in there, pick up your legs. So that's just a, a transfer um, specifically for uh, a chair that is similar to a rugby chair. Um, 
but with no breaks. And when I first tried rugby, that was a very scary transfer for me. Um, so we will stop sharing. Um, all right. And um, so, yeah, you can go on the Active Project. I'll, I'll put the link in the chat in a little bit. Um, but so with that, I'd like to just start introducing some of the Northeast Passage uh, Wildcats. Thank you guys for being here. A bit of a background about the Wildcats. They were formed in 2007 uh, when the main team and the Massachusetts team came together to form New England's only competitive quad rugby team. Uh, they practice weekly at the University of New Hampshire during the winter and fall seasons and compete in local, regional, and national tournaments. Which, speaking of nationals, huge congratulations to all of you for winning nationals this past or last weekend in Tampa Bay, Florida. That is huge. Um, and what a way to honor also um, our recently past beloved teammate, Billy. I'm sure he's up smiling, um, looking down on all you guys in heaven. Uh, so Sarah, do you mind if I pass the mic off to you to introduce yourself and some of the team that's joined us tonight? Sure thing. Um, I'm Sarah. I am the head coach of Northeast Passage Wildcats. Uh, newly, I've been in the wheelchair rugby world for 12 years, but they were nice enough to welcome me last year. So it's a great start and really high expectations at this point. I don't know if this is going to be like an every year thing, but um, I have my assistant coach here, Allison. I've got Robbie, one of my captains, Eric, the other captain, B. Rent. I think that's you there. I've got Keenan up top. And I think that's everybody, but that's a pretty good turnout, I would say, for a team to come join. Um, and then a shout out to a couple other folks, I think. Uh, definitely see Liz. Uh, she's in the world as well. Very accomplished athlete in wheelchair rugby. So give her some time, too. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to pick on you guys individually a little bit, too, um, uh, to just maybe go around and give some introductions, maybe um, injury level uh, a classification, um, just to throw that out there. Um, and then we can get into, um, kind of what that means a little bit later. Um, and maybe how long you've been playing wheelchair rugby and how you got into it. Um, Keenan, do you want to, do you want to kick us off there for this conversation? And then you can just, con uh, you're just to my left here. You can pass it to one of your other teammates after. Sure. Uh, my name is Keenan Weishadel, and I've been playing rugby for seven years. Um, I'm a C7 complete, um, and I heard about rugby through my rec therapy program at Spalding, um, and then kind of I was playing within four months of my accident, um, and it's definitely been a big piece of like my drive towards more independence, I guess. Um, so, uh, it, this year was pretty awesome winning, um, and couldn't have done it without some of these teammates. Um, so I'll keep it on the top row that I have. I have Allison next. Um, so I'll let you go, Allison. Hi, I'm Allison. I'm the assistant coach, um, this year at least. Um, but I've been helping out as a volunteer and now as an assistant coach for like the last year and a half um, and just kind of found out through Northeast Passage and being a volunteer. So I mainly just changed tires, but I'll send it off to Rob. Hi, uh, I'm Robbie Duges. Um, I am a... 1.0 on the screen here. I don't know if it's got me. So I'm a one. Um, I've been playing for 12 years. Um, I got into rugby through rec therapy at Spalding and um, through Billy Buffard actually um, came to visit me at outpatient rehab and introduced me to the game. I came to my first practice and was hooked. Um, I've been playing ever since, so I uh, will send it off to Eric. Hey guys, I'm Eric. Uh, I am a C8. I'm classified as a 2-5. Uh, I've been playing rugby since September of 2015. Uh, I got started at MP 
Power SCI out in Long Island, and they hooked me up with Robbie here, and uh, I've been playing for the Wildcats ever since, and uh, got my first chair through Kelly Brush, through a grant through them, and been grinding ever since. Uh, I don't know who's next. Uh, B rent you out there? Pop in. Yes, no? Sure. Wait. Uh, all right. Is it working? Yep. All right. Uh, so I'm a couple head injuries. Um, so I kind of got in from after a few years being head injury and not doing anything, I found Northeast Passage. I actually started out with lacrosse and I ended up with my second head injury, which ended up being enough to apparently class me down as a 2.5 and in, and this has been my second season. Um, not good with technology, so if uh, you want to control this. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, I think that means mute him. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I think Liz is next, other <laughs> rugby folks on the call. So I'm Liz Dunn. I actually live in Pittsburgh and play for a team based out of Texas now. Um, but I've been playing rugby since like 2013 when I got my start with Pittsburgh. Um, practiced with them for a while before um, doing some development stuff and made the U.S. team for a couple years as well. Um, but I am C5, C6 injury and classified as a 0.5. Thank you so much. Thanks all of you guys for being here. Any other rugby folks on the call? Diane, um, just for the people that aren't rugby folks on the call, um, so coach stepping in, I guess, to explain a little bit. Uh, when please. it comes to rugby, uh, I can only put four players on the court at one time for a maximum of eight points. So when everybody kind of says their classification, it's up for uh, so the coach of the team to decide, you know, who the best eight points are and what the combination of points to essentially uh, make the best lineup. So, you know, looking at some of the people on the call, Eric's 100% one of my starters. I might play one of Eric, two of Keenan, and then Robbie on a court at a single time just to effectively utilize the eight points to the best of our ability. That's huge. Thanks for explaining that. Um, so yeah, now I kind of want to open it up to, um, whoever else is on the call. Thank you all for being here. I just like to remind everyone, you know, the more people here, like the better the conversation. And when you just show up unapologetically, share whatever you're feeling, ask whatever's on your mind, you encourage others to do the same. So, um, which just allows for a more meaningful productive and insightful conversation. So with that, um, if it's okay, I'm gonna kick it off to Allie B. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Can you just introduce yourself? And if you have any um, questions in regards to rugby, Thanks. these guys are the experts obviously, and I encourage you to ask why. Yeah, um, so my name's Allie. I am a C5, C6. Um, incomplete. I've been injured for just a little bit over a year and a half. Um, and I'm up in Vermont and I know Keenan's tried to get me to come down and try some rugby some along with lots of, um, encouragement from others as well. And it just timing hasn't necessarily worked out. Um, you know, I guess one of the things I, I definitely think I'm interested. I played field hockey all the way through college so definitely into like the sports side of things. And like, I love mountain biking and skiing and all those things. Um, I guess one of the things that I question, even though I'm told by many people, it doesn't matter. I don't really have tricep function. And I, majority of my time right now is spent in a power chair. I do have a manual chair that like I get into some, but like not necessarily like the strongest in it. So I guess if I were to ask a question, uh, 
it could be along the lines of like where does that like line be drawn on like whether you can play or not on your level of function if that makes sense at all Liz you want to take it yeah I was gonna say because that kind of describes my level of function perfectly I actually did use a power chair for the first two years after my injury and then when I moved to like larger city and got power assist wheels and then went into a manual chair too. So like it took a little time to build up strength to be able to push in the rugby chair a little faster. But I mean, it's not going to stop you from being able to play by any means. So you'd probably just be like a 0.5 similar to me. So what I usually tell people, um, I'm a PT as well. So I did a lot of inpatient rehab and, you know, the biggest thing and PTs are very guilty, I'll say is, you know, they're not ready to push yet. But the reality is it's a lot easier to push a rugby chair because of the camber on the wheels. So you might find yourself to be more successful. Uh, it's a heck of a lot of fun. It's a great workout. And I always tell people you have to start somewhere. You know, you're not just going to wake up one day and be able to push down a court. And every single person on this call at one point was the slowest person at practice. There is no way around it, no matter how much function. So I usually just say start somewhere and you'll be surprised where you end up. And being slow isn't always the worst thing. If you can play smart, that's what matters most because that's what I focus on is like positioning and where I need to be rather than my speed because I don't really have any. <laughs> Anyone else want to touch on that? Thank you, guys. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Liz, but your classification as a female as well is really what positioned you pretty strategically to make the U.S. Mm -hmm. squad. Um, you know, as a female, you do get a 0.5 allowance. So essentially, um, there can be more points on the court and more function with you present. So if you are very smart and you do learn chair position, you're really an integral part of the team, even though you might not feel like the most functional part. And there's also a really good community of women that play too. So Awesome. Thank you, guys. Although not yet at Northeast Passage, we got to build that up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we have two people on this call that uh, love to love to see on the court next year. If you're able to make it down, I know it's a, I know it's a long drive to make it to UNH. Um, so it's definitely maybe we can try to connect to at least try to get you in a chair sometime, um, even if it's tough to make it down to a practice. Um, don't hesitate to reach out. Yeah, I know for myself, I'm hoping to be driving late fall, early winter. And so I think that will definitely also be a huge piece to like getting down there. Because I personally don't really care. But like to try to find someone to get down there is the hard part. But like I said, hopefully by winter we'll be driving. It's a process. <laughs> driving opens doors. I see it for us though, Allie. Um, Wade, uh, hi, thanks for joining us on this call. How are you? Um, would you mind sharing a little bit about yourself and, uh, you know, if it poses any questions? Um, I think you're on mute. There we go. There you go. Okay. I myself am, am not paralyzed, but my wife is, and I'm searching for things. All right. Um, she, uh, had a spinal stroke almost about two years ago. And it's a uh, T9. Uh, there's only 4% of any nerves that go past that. So we don't have a, a, a power chair, but she's getting pretty good with the manual one. We're hoping to set up. We don't know anything about rugby. I'm going to be hitting this website, trying to find out things to do because she was a marathoner and, you know, that's gone. You know, so we're trying to find another sport that would um, make her happy and that we can participate in. So I'm all ears because you guys are talking points and things like that. I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but it's true. I, uh, I, I see a thing that says uh, there's like skiing is, is another thing that with this active project live, she's a uh, she's skier too, downhill. So we're just looking to see where we can go. Um, we lost a year and a half because the hospital uh, didn't turn her in the middle of COVID. So 
she had a massive wound on her back and we had to get that all fixed. So she's been about getting around now for about seven months. So we're going to see what happens. Where are you based? San Antonio, Texas. Okay. I think there is a team in San Antonio. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's always that we're all at least our team. I know we let paraplegics come to our practices mm -hmm. um, and play just to be able to, you know, get moving around. And it's also nice to have just other adaptive athletes there for our practice. Um, Cause usually like our team, we struggle to get a full, if you have eight players at practice, you can play a four on four mm -hmm. and that would be mm -hmm. ideal. Um, and sometimes some teams like have sway with function that might, we might have a lot of, we call them low pointers. If you're um, if you have lower function in your arms. So some people like Liz and Robbie, they're all low pointers. Um, and then I'm a mid pointer. So like I'm a class as a 2.0. Um, and I'm like a middle of the pack because I can use my arms, but I don't have much core function. That's, um, that's where Nancy are... is. She, yeah. um, we're, we're always concerned with her falling out, you know, cause uh, she's got arms and she moves that chair around, but, um, being down at around T9, you know, uh, there's not much core. Yeah. And when you sit in a rugby chair, we, we have a lot of dump in the rugby chair. So you're sitting low. Um, right. and you usually have a chest strap. Like, uh, I wear like a weightlifting belt around my body that's mm -hmm. tying me into my chair, uh, keeping me from swaying side to side. Right. Okay. So yeah, learned something new already. <laughs> okay. And you and say there's a team down here. You think there, there is one? I don't know anybody on it, but I believe there is a team in San Antonio from my I'm understanding. I think uh, so they might do like a weekend practice or something. I'm not sure what their week weekly schedule is and if they have extra chairs. Okay. Thank yeah, you. they're kind of on and off if they have enough players for a team right now. So I've known a couple of people that have played with them. They do have a lot of other sports in that area too. So if um, their rugby isn't too current, there's a lot of other adaptive sports in that area. And I just looked it up. It's the South Texas Regional Adaptive and Para Sports. Can we pop that in the chat? Yeah. Thank you. I was also gonna add, you mentioned uh, skiing. Uh, Move United does a great event out West uh, where they have grants that they, mm -hmm. for their learn to ski program. So for somebody who's learning to adaptive ski, that'd be well worth, they bring in new folks all the time. And okay. um, it's really a great opportunity. There's hundreds of people that go there just to learn to ski. Okay. That would be great. Yes. Cause she loves skiing. Mm. And check out the active project. There's um, you can, if you um, sign up and create a, create a login page, you can actually go to the map that's there and mm -hmm. see what organizations are nearby you. So, um, you know, the wheelchair rugby team might, I'm not, I don't know off the top of my head, but it might actually already be on the active project and it'll, mm -hmm. it'll um, show you where you are and how close you are to it. Sounds uh, good. Yeah, I did put that link in the chat for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, but you also brought up a really good point about just classifications. Uh, Sarah, would you mind explaining a little bit more on how people are classified? Sure thing. Um, at first and foremost, every sport's a little bit different. Uh, not all sports have the same classification as wheelchair rugby. So wheelchair rugby started as a sport for quadriplegics. Based on that, we have probably the most extensive classification system. It's based not only on your physical function, but also your court performance. So there's two portions. You'll do a bench test where a PT or OT will evaluate essentially your strength throughout your upper and lower extremity, as well as your trunk. And then they'll, uh, after the bench test, go to some court skills and evaluate, you know, how do you pass and how do you pick up a ball and things of that nature to determine essentially the most functional class. So um, as an example, you know, Keenan may on a bench test be 2.25 numerically, 
but when you see him on the court, it's like, well, he performs a little bit more like a two. So it's very critical. Um, they look very detailed at each athlete, whereas other sports like lacrosse or sled hockey don't really have a classification system like that. Um, you know, there are some able-bodied folks that play sled hockey. They're allowed um, to participate at a certain level. So it, mm -hmm. it really depends on the sport. Um, some are more inclusive than others. Uh, wheelchair rugby doesn't mean to be exclusive in the sense of quadriplegics, but it really is the only sport left um, that uses manual wheelchairs for that category of injury. So, um, mm -hmm. but I would, I would encourage you to look into each sport as it relates to the function for somebody. So if, you know, she's really sounds like she's somebody who loves to compete, you know, marathoners are competitive. <laughs> oh yeah. Definitely probably, yeah. <laughs> so um, she's probably definitely going to want to get into a sport where she can compete at a higher level at her injury at T9. Okay. Thank you. Totally. Uh, Zachary, I see you're on the call. Hi. Hello from the coast of Maine. Nice to join the conversation. Uh, Keenan, thanks for the invitation to jump in and, and listen. Um, I am not a wheelchair rugby player, but I will share that it is made an indelible impression on me watching wheelchair rugby practice at the Shepherd Center in Atlanta about 20 years ago. Um, I was intimidated and inspired in the same in the same moment. Um, yeah, for relevance to this conversation, I'm a incomplete C4, C5, uh, walking kind of a upside down para. Um, and uh, Wade, yeah, I've let my bias shine through here. Kelly, I promise not to railroad your call, but Wade, your wife sounds like someone who's got to try adaptive Nordic. Uh, and or biathlon and there's a bunch of great programs nationally for that too great idea so shepherd center what were you doing down there because sarah's got some roots in the shepherd center ah oh nice um actually my family's all from athens georgia uh but uh, my injury again c4 c5 was in 2002 um and when i got you know once i could I was originally, you know, surgery and immediate uh, rehab was in, in Bend, Oregon, where I got injured, um, but then went to Shepherd Center for, uh, for my own sort of, I was a, I was inpatient at Shepherd for a while um, and tried miserably at basketball, wheelchair basketball, because my arms don't work very well. Um, I really, really enjoyed watching the rugby team, like, crash around into each other one afternoon. It was, it was pretty awesome. Um, yeah. But I uh, get to get to play with Keenan every once in a while when we overlap in New England, which is pretty great. Uh, so hats off to you guys on the recent success down in Florida. That's that's really awesome. I'm just going to float it out there. You still could be a wheelchair rugby player. <laughs> hey, you know, that's what Keenan said. Uh, and actually, you know, it's never too late. I don't know. We'll... <laughs> I uh, yeah, I'm I'm not opposed Right now, I'm trying to find some good things to do because I'm having a hard time right now with some nerve stuff on my legs. Um, so the, yeah, some sort of alternative adventure sounds sounds pretty good. Um, sled hockey was was not for me. Um, but maybe, maybe. I don't know. Keenan, you'll have to go to work on me. Maybe you'll get me to convince me. We'll take a maybe. We'll take a maybe. <laughs> I mean, I'm tired. I'm tired. I was gonna say if Diane and I are going down, there's always yeah. room for more new people joining. Yeah. <laughs> you won't be the only new it's, one. Right. Yeah. I think my kids would dig it. I think they'd be pretty they'd think it's cool. I bet. Keenan, were you gonna say something? No, I was just gonna try to recruit him more. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, I'll see you on uh Keenan, I'll see you on Saturday. So We'll chat for sure. Uh, Jabler. What is your, what is your, um, like when, you know, sort of bringing a wingman to practice or like, you know, if someone, you know, you got a friend, you may want to try it. And especially if said friend happened to be walking, you know, Keenan and, and I have had this conversation more than once, but just curious about, you know, sort of other people, your experience, um, when you have a participant who, um, you know, someone who wants to participate, either they're there to support a friend or they're just like, you know, oh, maybe, maybe they are 
ambulatory, but still have some other weirdness. Um, you know, jumping in a chair and wheeling around has that has that vibe typically for for folks. I mean, personally, well, as someone, no, they, sorry, 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 you can go ahead. Right. No worries. Well, no, what I was going to say was that, like, as someone who is newly uh, a quad and definitely has limited function, I think it's one of those things that anyone with an SCI is going to experience similar things to a certain degree, you know, like you said, nerve pain, whether it's uh, bowel, bladder function, like anything, like all of the other things that come along with it. I think at the end of the day, those things all still play a, an important part. And like, I don't think someone would be like looked upon differently because, oh, like, hey, like, yeah, you're able to, you know, be a little bit more functional, say with the legs, but it doesn't take away from all of the other things that come along with it. And I think that is one important part that I like continue to like look at with SCIs is we're kind of all in it together in the realm of there are so many things that come along with it, not just like your level of function, I guess you could say. I was just going to say everything has evolved so much in terms of classification that there actually are quite a few people that walk into the gym these days, whether they're amputees or other, you know, there are some folks that have CP diagnoses. We personally at NEP have an athlete with an SMA type diagnosis. Um, I will tell you that you're probably going to have that much more smack talk directed your way, <laughs> all in good fun, uh, specifically from Robbie, if we're being honest. Uh, but with that, I'd, I'd be disappointed said, if I didn't. Yeah, yeah, no, it's you would not be the only one in our gym, and you would hundred percent not be the only one on the national spectrum. Like, more than welcome. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I will and say, so, like I are. said, I'm the head injury guy, so I can walk a little bit. Um, not safely though. <laughs> But uh, yeah, more the merrier, especially when uh, I know like we talked about numbers for practices, always good. So I, I got to say, it's a really striking visual to have the head injury guy talking about safety with a gas can over his shoulder in the Zoom window. That's that's solid. Um, oh, yeah. these are empty. Ah, yeah, even better. Um, yeah, <laughs> head injuries are some. I've, yeah, I got to I got to. I stay away from from that that's uh too many but we can all have fun oh yeah absolutely robbie what are you gonna say um i will say that we are a very um inclusive group we would love to see anyone of of any ability come to play um like uh, I think Brad said, more the merrier. Um, you will not get made fun of, um, and we will enjoy having anyone who wants to come to practice. Um, we would love having anyone there. So if you have any desire to come, please do. Hey, thanks for the invitation. Yeah, and I can just speak on that too. Uh, I went to... I think I went to three practices this year, but you guys were very welcoming and I had no idea what I was doing in each one of like the people on this call and others um, like went out of their way to make sh like teach me a little bit something or educate me of how the sport um, works and like all the classifications I think I needed to like explain five times. Um, so they're, they're really awesome to I'm excited for next year to to come to more practices because they're a great group, guys. Um, Ed, hey, I see you're on the call. What's up? Thanks for joining us again. Yeah, you bet. Um, greetings, all. Um, Ed Newell, I'm in Duxbury, Massachusetts, which is about uh, 30 miles south of Boston in uh, maybe two hours from Durham. Uh, where you guys practice. I don't know if there's any 
opportunities for the sport between Duxbury and Durham, New Hampshire, but uh, rugby is not a sport that I've ever considered for myself, but listening to you guys talk about it and envisioning uh, eight of you banging around on a court somewhere, it, uh, it sounds enticing. Uh, I also heard mention of uh, the Spalding Adaptive Sports Program, which uh, I've been involved with uh, since my discharge from Spalding last May. It'll be a year ago Friday, I guess, uh, in the mountain biking uh, program, which is how I got injured in a, in a mountain bike crash. And I figured, get back on the horse, you know. Uh, so I've been uh, participating in that program for oh nine or ten months now, right right through the winter, and uh, that's once a week. So I've got a lot of lot of free time to fill, and looking for another another sport. The snow has melted, and uh, was I'm only fifteen months post injury, so I thought maybe learning to ski might be pushing the envelope a little bit this winter. So that's on the that's on the docket for next winter. But uh, I assume uh, rugby is being played indoors. Is that correct? Yeah. And How far are you from New Hampshire? I'm, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm an hour south of Boston, uh, which leaves me, I don't know, less than 90 minutes from UNH on a good day, on a good traffic day. Well, that get back on the horse mentality, I, I think would be uh, a perfect place for you on the rugby court. So I'm a, I'm a C3, C4 quad. Um, I can stand, I can walk uh, somewhere between a quarter and a third of a mile before I collapse in exhaustion. Uh, the walking is not pretty, but I can do it. Uh, and I'm working on hand function. My my left side works pretty well. My right side, you know, not so much. Did I meet you at the um, Kelly Brush Foundation events? Yes. Okay. Yes, you did. I was at yeah. the gala. Um, yes, you know Jameson. Yes, I do. In fact, uh, Jameson is uh, a participant in some of the SCI Boston uh, support groups that I participate in on a regular basis. Um, I don't know how in touch you've been with Jameson. He was pretty sick for a while. Yeah. Um, I heard a little bit about it, but I haven't heard anything else recently. He's, he's back. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. That's good to hear. yeah. He, he pulled through. But yeah, we would love to have you for sure. I say it sounds like we got to start some carpools because I drive two hours for practice. So, so that's that's the thing, Sarah. <laughs> is is you know, it, it, I don't know how long your practices are, but if you look at potential for five hours of drive time, uh, round trip, uh, I I just I don't have the travel thing down yet. Uh, you know, as far as uh, spending the night out of my home where I have everything that I need to support my spinal cord injury peculiarities that we all suffer from uh, in one, in one form or another uh, as an element of challenge to getting involved in a program that's located pretty far away. Well, I do drive up every Sunday morning and then I drive immediately back after practice, which some yep. of the folks on the call would tell you is crazy. But you drive if you want to try um Somerset Mass. Oh, okay. So you're you're on the south you're in southeastern mass too. Okay. Yeah. So I think I drive Jameson, Jack, and then Diane also drives, but she's closer to Boston. Um, so if you did want to try it out, we could certainly accommodate you yeah. and carpooling would be huge. That would that would make it do, totally doable because um, 
don't really have anyone on my end that other than my wife that would want to make that sort of a, a commitment for or, for time and for driving. And to be honest, I don't want to put her through that. Uh, put her through enough already with this damn injury. That's fair. We we have the summer for the most part off, but when it comes to the fall, if you want to drop your email yeah. in the chat, we'll definitely make it happen. Sure. I'll I'll uh, send it directly to you actually. Awesome. Perfect. I think we're getting you some players. Yeah. I mean, I've always been an, always been an athlete, whether it was playing hockey or I mean, played hockey up until I was uh, 58 years old. I'm 63 now and I kept hurting myself. So I decided to hang up the skates uh, and I took up mountain biking. And uh, you know, now, you know, the rest. Hmm. Uh, jabber or jab. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Ooh. Um. Yeah. Um. My name is um John Abel. Um. I'm based Hi. off in Bronx, New York, and everything. Um. I'm a T T11 injury. Um. Been about 15 years now, and everything. Um. I, I've I've never played rugby and everything, but is there is there like um. Can I go to the, um to, to the active um thing you're talking about, and I can see examples? Cause I, I mean I'm I'm interested. I mean New Hampshire is a little ways, but sometimes I go to Massachusetts to visit, so maybe I can um send into a practice. Yeah, I do. You guys know if uh, New York City has a team? Yes, and they are probably on the active project. Um, but okay. I can't. I should know this, but um. But I don't know where they practice, but I think it's Stony Brook. Um, at oh, least okay. that's where okay. we do their tournaments are at Stony Brook. Long Island. Okay, I'm familiar with them as well. That might be a little closer for you. But um, yeah, yeah. so the Active Project, we are working on getting some videos, um, educational videos up there of um, quad rugby, but they're not up yet. So continue to check back there. But for videos, uh, where's the best place to to look for that? I can drop the USWRA's website. They did an anniversary video, which is actually pretty good. I also just dropped in the chat the information for the New York team, including the team rep. So Darren's awesome and super responsive. So he would totally get right back. Awesome. Thank you. I think. Yes, thank you for that. Thanks. You can also watch like Paralympic games on YouTube. A lot of them are sh um, on there. The 2016 Paralympic gold medal game was pretty, pretty darn good to watch. Um, it's a lot faster than how we play rugby, um, or at least most of us do. Um, so if you see like a lot of hard hits, um, it's usually the amputees that lay them out and there's not a lot of them. So um a little less to worry about when you come practice with us. Okay, okay. That sounds a little less threatening. <laughs> uh hey Michelle, are you um are you available? Are you are there? Hey, good hey, to see you. How are you? Um, so I'm in New Hampshire, about an hour, I guess, from Durham. Um, and I would love to smash into things, but your practice is kind of early for me. So that's the struggle, um, getting up and out the door and there for nine o'clock. But other than that, I'm, I'm making it a goal for the fall to make a couple practices at least. Um, a C5, C6, so quad technically. And have you played before? Did you get in a rugby chair at Empower? I did at Empower, but not any more than that. Play, play. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is pretty early. <laughs> yeah, Ed. So um, something Michelle just said just piqued a question in my mind, and that is, um, do you have chairs 
for prospective participants to try uh, and to practice in, because obviously as an as a new uh, participant, I wouldn't yet have my own chair. We definitely have chairs. Um, some of them have been donated by athletes who got a new one. Others have just been program chairs for a long time. So I say that because some are newer than others, but they're all functional and I can meet the needs of most every level of injury. Um, we kind of have to make do with some sizing. Sometimes it's a little wider than I might like it to be for you, but that's something we can talk about. And Diane can attest for the most part, we can get a pretty decent fit off the bat. And then we can talk about, you know, if you're interested in getting a chair moving forward. And lots of grant opportunities out there to get your own chair. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Angelo, hey, what's up? Well, thanks, how's everybody? I've been warned about quad running. Well, maybe not from you guys, but all my friends, they want me to come out to play. I'm a, I'm a para. I'm a T8, T6, T8 complete para for the last 30 something years. I play a lot of different sports, basketball, softball, triathlon, and um, biking. But I've never won and play. They wanted me to come out and play with them, but they warned me that they just want to knock me out of my chair and push me around. So I don't know. They want to prove to me that they're, they can push me around. So I don't want to get hurt. It probably would be fun. And I may play with them guys one day, but I do enough other stuff. Uh, and as I'm aging, I actually quit playing basketball because that hurts my body. So I think playing quad rugby and running into the chairs would probably hurt me more to do anything. You know, at least practicing with them, I should say. But yes, I've been warned. It's like playing football to me, they said. They're waiting for you to come across the middle so they can give you that good jab. But I have watched it. I've watched the movie Murder Ball. I've had a lot of friends here in Chicago who play. Um, and it's an interesting game. So, but other than that, um, I've been good. You know, because a lot of you guys are on the East Coast, huh? It's my bad. I can call them back. You guys are on the East Coast. Is that right? Sounds like we're all almost like over half of us are New Englanders. Ah, okay, cool. cool. I'm from Chicago, so. Um, might be visiting Boston because my niece goes to Boston College, so I might be coming out there sometime. Maybe I might stop and see that. <laughs> It'd be interesting. Yeah. Push the old man around. That would be it. Don't worry. It happens. How are you, Diane? I'm good, thank you. You bring up a good point, though. Like, um, you know, what types of injuries do you need to look out for when playing wheelchair rugby, and uh, how to prevent injury? Have you, any of you guys had an injury or? Um... I, I was like, wondering about that too. I've like jammed my finger a couple of times, but other than that, like there's not really, like you get, you burn up your arms a little bit, but you wear arm sleeves. And so I don't know. I feel like you sometimes it will fall too in your wheelchair, but. I don't know. A lot of us have experience falling in chairs. So the good old tuck and tuck and roll sometimes always seems to pay off. Hopefully knock on wood. I think, uh, I think the game looks more intimidating than it really is. Um, we're strapped in pretty good and the chairs stay upright. Uh, we'll take some hits, but it, you're pretty protected. You'll get like Keenan said, some jam fingers and, but that's about it. I mean, um, like I said, it's it's more intimidating than it really is. So, if you uh, if you want to go out, go out and try it, and uh, try it before you judge. I guess. Yeah, I was gonna say, as someone like more petite compared to a lot of the players out there, the chair does take most of the impact, and like it's really not too bad. And once you learn a few things about chair positioning and how to get hit, then it doesn't like you feel it even less too. So there's a lot of ways to prevent any injuries, so. Yeah, I think the only injuries I've seen, true injuries were some of the amputees that 
kind of did it to themselves. Like, you know, they were hopping or doing something they shouldn't and got pushed over in a less than ideal position. But yeah, that, that was totally their fault. It wasn't anything that was done to them by another player or anything like that. They were asking for it. I feel like the worst is probably if you like flip forward onto somebody else's chair, you could hit your head a little bit. I've seen like a few gashes, but that's pretty rare and only at the higher level too. So any of the, um, yeah, like Northeast Passage and stuff that usually doesn't happen. So there you go. Uh, Laura, I see you on the call. Are you able to talk? Just want to open the floor to anyone that would like to. Mark? Um, I will say I do have to head out, um, but it's been great talking to everyone. Uh, and I hope to see some of you at practice next year. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for coming. Uh, and Mark or Ben, just want to give you guys the opportunity. Ben saying he has no mic. Oh, bummer. I know. He's a funny guy. Any questions that you want to post into the chat uh, or comments? Um, any other like closing remarks? Thank you all so much for being here. Um, any other final questions? I got a question. How many of you, yeah. like, by raising hands, because I can see your faces, how many of you guys, how many of you men and women play quad rugby already? Okay. So there's just a couple of you on here? Okay. Yeah. And cool. Robbie, who left the call. There's right. a couple okay. of them. Okay. Seems like everybody's interested in it, though. All right. That's all I wanted to know. Uh, we might have Ben back. Now he's got two phones here. <laughs> That's commitment. That is commitment. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. Oh, connecting to audio. Yep. There go. he goes. No, maybe oh. not. Oh, now I have two. Uh -oh. It's working, though. We hear you. Oh, geez. Hey, Ben. Let me close this one out. I have to leave. All right, still see me? Good. What's up? Nothing. Sorry, that was that was on my good to day. have you. Yeah, thank you. So sorry, I joined a little late, but that's okay. Uh, the question becomes: What was wrong with the house today, Ben? Huh. <clears throat> Everything. He's renovating a house. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, trying to make it all accessible. So it's been a battle, but we're getting there slowly but surely. Um, well, thanks again, everyone. Uh, I hope you guys were able to take something away from this. Um, if any, will you have like more specific questions or comments, please reach out. Um, you can reach out to Allison, reach out to myself. Um, Allison, if you actually wouldn't mind posting maybe your email into the chat for anyone that's interested. Um, and this by no means, I hope there's a stopping point. Um, I hope it's more of a springboard uh, conversations here. Uh, and again, thanks for everyone coming out. It's a lot more fun when we have <laughs> names and faces here. So thank you for that. Uh, this is recorded and um, is meant to be shared shared uh so we are going to post it on the kelly brush um youtube channel at some point we'll keep you posted for that but um everyone have a wonderful evening hey, hey good night all good night